Um, today we have Kate Saunders Solomon here with us. Hi. <laughs> and um, yeah, we um, we are connecting because we have um, both are entrepreneurs. And and we work with our with our children in what we're doing. So and, and other kids as well. So I'll tell you a little bit about Kate, and then we'll just jump into some questions, and um, you'll get to hear all about the wonderful things she does. She is a cooking instructor, and she's also the co-founder of Rivertown Public Market, which is an open air food market. And she's also been a researcher on the cookbook One Big Table. She develops culinary curricula for after school programs. And um, she also teaches kids and adults cooking classes. So, um, and she is a cake and tart enthusiast. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds delicious. Um, and uh, she she focuses on relaxed and hands-on cooking. Is that right? And um, and I looked at uh, some of the, the the classes she has on YouTube right now, and they look like delicious things. They're broccoli fritters and scallion pancakes, which reminds me of China, actually. And um, and in her classes, I thought it was interesting, too, that she shares the history and the origin, the country of origin of the foods that she teaches. So we are going to jump right in here. Um, and find, the first thing I'd like to ask you is, because, you know, we're interviewing people, you can reach anybody around the world now, where, where in the world are you? <laughs> I am in Hastings and Hastings on Hudson, New York, which is um, about 20 minutes north of Manhattan. Um, about we're about three minutes north of Yonkers okay. and Westchester County. So it's a little tiny town on the Hudson River. It's beautiful. Oh, it sounds yeah, it sounds very quaint. And it is quaint. It's a nice yeah. place to be right now. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, and is that where you have the Rivertown Public Market, the open air food market? That has been, we have done that twice. Um, myself and five other folks um, co produced that, and I'm one of the founders. And we have only done it twice so far. Unfortunately, because of um, the current situation, we're not going to be able to do it in the fall. Yeah. But we started it a few years ago, and it made a big splash. We won the Best of Westchester. It's been oh. an amazing experience just cultivating and producing an event and working with so many um, local vendors and producers and makers all food makers but wonderful an amazing experience and that has been held thus far in Dobbs Ferry which is right next door to us oh okay wonderful yeah yeah well as soon as things you know shift who knows when that will be but it'll be nice to have that going again I'm sure um, and in the meantime, we're all finding different other ways, right, to bring our, to share our gifts with the world. <laughs> and online, that's, you know, that's the, <laughs> the challenge and the opportunity right now, right? For both. I would say it's a little bit of each. Yeah. So what's uh, working well, because of these are strange times in particular, and um, we have an audience of families and uh, moms who are at home and trying to find ways to work with their their children as as well as get their own jobs done. <laughs> um, uh, what is working well for you? Do you have anything that's working well for you and your family at home these days that you'd like to share? I think, well, I have a small family. It's just myself, my partner, Mike, my husband, and my son, Jonah, who is 10. Uh -huh. um, we moved into a house over the summer. We were in an apartment up until the summer we bought our first home. And that in itself has been a blessing because my husband's able to work upstairs in the guest room slash office. And my son and I are able to exist downstairs and having the physical space has been helpful for us. Yeah. Um, I imagine being in an apartment in the city right now. Uh, that's a really or an apartment in general, I, it's tough being in a small space. But just, I think for us, for me personally, and the work I do, I'm able to compartmentalize and have buckets. Mm -hmm. um, husband works full time, I do not. So I'm already accustomed to being a full-time mom and a part-time entrepreneur. Um, mm -hmm. 
So I'm able to dedicate the morning to his schooling. And then he spends time outside. He's very good at independent play outside. So I'm able to take the afternoon and do work. And I'm happy to work after he goes to bed, even though he goes to bed late. I still don't. I'm a night owl. So I'm able to carve out that time for myself. Yeah. I don't have any big secrets. (laughs) It's so personal and so challenging and... I just, I feel lucky that I have a supportive partner and he supports what I do. And that's been huge, even in normal times. Uh, yeah. just, that's wonderful. Yeah. I, I hate hearing like my spouse allows me like, no, it's not like he allows me. He's completely pushed me to go in this direction and start my own business. That I love and he's awesome. He does the dishes after my classes. <laughs> He's amazing. So I'm really lucky to have that partner. And I'm lucky to have my son helping me in this way as well. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. So I heard having space, you know, and having um, time for yourself as well as for your work. And also time that you're actually completely present and focused with your son, with your child. So these are all really great, you know. Yeah, and I only have one child. So it's different family with you know three two three four or more sure. that they have to yeah. help school. I only have the one and uh, yeah. so it's a, yeah. a little easier for me yeah, the yeah. Way only is challenging because he doesn't have a playmate but it's also you know for me it works and yeah it's easier I think for me during this time just having one child to school yeah yeah I know having different like younger kids too can make things more challenging and I know yeah Yeah. but it's just so nice to hear how other people are doing so that we don't feel alone (laughs) so in in what we are you know you gotta have a lot of empathy for everyone around you yeah we're healthy so we have that hurdle to yeah we haven't had any knock on wood um we've been healthy Wonderful. So glad to hear that. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Um, so let's see. I, the, the one thing that jumped out at me when I was reading your bio um, was that you strongly believe that cooking fosters connection among people. And I would love for you to say more about what that means for you. And if it means, if you're also thinking like in terms of in the home as well, like how that works. Yeah. Um, when I teach my classes, they're very community oriented. When I, uh, uh, there's not a lot of individual tasks. I make sure everybody works together. They're both in my youth classes and my adult classes. I want it to be a very collaborative experience. I want it to be about communication. I want it. I want my classes to be about, you know, fostering a sense of um, artistic independence in both the children and the adults. I want them to feel like they've accomplished something. And sometimes that means working in teams, working in pairs. Um, I like, of course, I I also teach individuals, but I I want people to know that it can be a great community experience, collaboration, um, that it's okay for kids to ask for help. And that's a big, big one for kids. Like there's no wrong question. You know, it's okay to be stuck. It's okay to ask a peer for help, an adult for help, and I make sure to always let them know that that is more than acceptable. Oh, wonderful. Wonderful, yeah. Yeah, and I, I imagine that translates into how you are with your own son, right, when you're at home. and I try. It's a little different with your own child. So he doesn't love to help me cook and I was the same way my parents were avid cooks I wanted nothing to do with it oh. I did not uh, my, this interest peaked in college for me oh I can't say it peaked it, it began in college when I studied abroad and took a cooking class with somebody else's mother <laughs> uh-huh. my own parents I did grow up around food so he does have an interest in eating and flavor yeah. and he's you know, he's got his limited 10 year old palate. He's, I always say there's no such thing as um, picky eaters. It's, you know, he's selective because he likes mm-hmm. spicy food and mm-hmm. loves, he's really into ramps right now. You know, <laughs> to what? What was it? Ramps. 
um, the the spring garlic ramps. Oh, yeah, yeah. So he's got an interesting palette, but he doesn't like fruit. So you know, it doesn't. My lessons don't always translate to home, and that that's okay too. You know, I never force him to eat anything he doesn't want to eat, but it does. It is nice for him to be around different foods and different flavors and be ex- exposed, and also to see me run my own business. Uh. Um, is really important yeah yeah I feel the same way I feel like I'm you know just modeling modeling what the potential is for them as well and and doing what and having the courage to do what I'm doing and what like what you're doing right I'm raising a boy and I don't want to get too much into politics but we do live in a male driven world so I feel like it would be different if I was raising a daughter like I think he he has some he knows his privilege and (laughs) <laughs> he knows you know, <laughs> told they could do whatever they want and have it. <laughs> Girls are not always told that. Um, yeah. Women's college and my, the commencement speech involved you or the woman said, you know, you can't have it all. You can't be a full-time parent and a career person. And we've, you know, my friends and I have spent the past 20 years trying to show that we can. Yeah. Ways of having it all. It's so personal. So. Um, but I like for him to see, you know, the female of the family taking care of the household and the male counterpart taking care of the household and Mm -hmm. we have our own careers and, you know, we are both available to him. So wonderful. (laughs) That's the future, right? You're modeling. (laughs) Yeah, it's wonderful. No role model. (laughs) That's great. Yeah. Um, I was just thinking about my own journey as you were talking with uh, with uh, cooking, and I did not know how to cook at all. All the way out, I graduated from college, no idea. I went off to China to teach English for a couple of years and was on my own. So not only having to figure out how to cook it with like food that I wasn't familiar with, and <laughs> I, it was it was pretty pretty sad. I think I, I ate a lot of rice during that time and was not the healthiest I could be. <laughs> but I since then, in my twenties. <laughs> what was that? I, didn't I ate a lot of rice in my twenties as well. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then you know, um, as a mom, I grew into it, especially for health reasons, you know, and and it's become yeah a way of life for us. And uh, you know, I get my girls in the cook in the kitchen cooking. They they enjoy it. My youngest daughter actually has a passion for it so for cooking now and yeah that's really exciting so huh that's awesome I love to hear that yeah yeah um she wants she has her eyes set on Le Cordon Bleu someday she really wants to how old is she she's 12 she's she's already she knows where she's headed (laughs) she's learning french just so that she'll be able to oh i encourage that yeah yeah (laughs) um so so yeah so why did you decide to focus on teaching kids um i definitely did not come about it directly in fact after school i said i'm never going to be a teacher and i'm never going to work with children um i don't like children and I didn't know that I would ever become a parent. Uh, I started working in a kitchen right after school and sort of veered in different directions, a little bit of public relations and marketing. I worked in classical music for a bit. And then after my son was born, I took a break. I don't, I've always had food in my life. I worked Mm -hmm. at a creamery for a little while and on a cookbook. And um, when my son was in pre-K he went to a small little co-op school and parents would often come in and help out in the classroom. And I love to cook. So I would come in and teach the kids how to make various, usually holiday related foods. And his teacher came up to me, I think we had made cornbread for Thanksgiving and said, you're really good at this. And I was like, good at what? <laughs> and she said, mm-hmm. the children. Oh, and I was shocked that she said that. Cause I didn't think I had anything special going at, uh, you know, I love my son and his friends are cute. And yeah. I just thought they were great kids. And she said, no, no, you really had their attention. Uh, you should give this a try. 
And at the time, I was lucky to have an association with, or just my son had been attending this STEAM sort of after school camp. And the woman was willing to give me my first shot at teaching cooking classes. She became, she went from STEM to STEAM when she added cooking. And mm. it went really well and it sort of grew from there. So I've been doing it for five years now. Oh, wow. So that's really how it started was just going into my son's classroom and working with the kids and turn out I have a passion for teaching and children. Yeah. You know, so if someone says, you know, teenagers, young adults, let that be a lesson. If you think I'm never going to do that, don't count anything out because teaching in any capacity or working with young children was the last thing I ever thought I wanted to do or would end up doing. And now it's my skill and my love so <laughs> isn't that amazing you never know what life what journey you're gonna end up on in life and that's so neat that somebody recognized that i'm you. very grateful to her yeah for wonderful so what do you love most about what you do i love that i can be creative i love that i can teach creativity and how that's important to you know it's food for the soul but that food can be a creative art and also necessary and that is really important to me the fact that it is twofold like that and to teach children to be independent um and to make you know every day for me is different not now not during the time of covid but generally speaking every day is like a new adventure working with different families. Some days I go to a co-working space to plan out menus or write recipes or just, you know, do whatever paperwork I need to do. Um, and so I'm able to have, the, I, I like the fact that my day-to-day -day is not monotonous and every day is different. And yeah. I love being with people. I love working with people and children and adults. I'm used to be a really shy human being, but I love this extroverted part of me and I love Ooh. being around other people. So it's been great in so many ways. Oh, wow. I just, I'm getting excited with you. <laughs> it's, there's, I can feel your passion and, and yeah, the excitement. I really do love what I do. Wonderful. Yeah. And it's so neat to see in your YouTube videos, your son there with you and- yeah, that that was a surprise to me. He is much like I was as a kid. He's, he's a lot more social in terms of friendship, but he's very shy um, and doesn't put himself out there in that way. He's definitely starting to come out of his shell. Mm -hmm. But it's been, I think it's been a surprise to both of us. And he's been really great. He obviously, you could tell he watches me. Even if he doesn't participate in my classes, he knows a lot of my buzzwords um he knows how to measure and mix and um it's Aww. great to have a child demonstrate since other kids are viewing the lessons it's nice for them to see the pacing and um you know if he the other day he poured some vanilla into a spoon and it spilled everywhere into the bowl and we just sort of went with it so it's <laughs> nice for him to see that it's okay if you make a mistake and it doesn't have to be a mistake like I just said after I really love vanilla so now we have a little extra vanilla ah that's wonderful so it's nice for them to see and yeah yeah so that makes me think about like oh I'm just thinking too one one thing that I do with my daughters and 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 I think particularly in the kitchen with Anna because she'll make mistakes and one thing we we often will say is well next time you know, next time we'll get that right. Or, you know. Make sure to tell the kids I that I mess up all the time. And it doesn't have to be a mess up. It's just, you know, something didn't go right or as expected. And, you know, you, there's always next time. And yeah, always, you never know what you're going to invent by making a mistake. Yeah. 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 We're very, very vanilla. And that's something we both like. So it worked, <laughs> out. So that worked out great. <laughs> Um, great. So just, uh, I think this per segue is perfectly into the, the last question, which is, do you have any advice for um, moms or dads at home in um, getting kids excited about cooking uh, alongside of you in the kitchen? 
Um, my first piece of advice is not to force it. Mm. Because if they're not interested, it's hard to, you know, I had no interest in, my dad was a hobby, a photographer on the side, you know, hobbyist. And yeah. I had nothing to do with it. A lot of times kids don't want to get involved in that way or they see it as a chore. So it's mm-hmm. the same with eating. Just don't push them and force them. But they will, if you're passionate about cooking, even if you don't love to cook, just showing them that it doesn't have to be frustrating. Um, sort of staying calm in the kitchen and modeling that, they'll pick stuff up. Like, yeah. I'm surprised. My son doesn't love to help in the kitchen, but he appreciates food and picks up a lot of what I'm doing by just walking by and watching me, you know, from his side eye or asking questions about what we're eating. Um, mm-hmm. so just keeping the dialogue open, really, and that goes for any passion or any hobby or any work you may be doing at home. Well, yeah. Stay at home because we're at home. Or yeah. Just in my case, just making sure he doesn't feel forced into helping me. I don't want him to see it as a chore. And I have noticed a developing love for food and appreciation of what I do. And I could see that in the classes he helps me in that he's picked up a lot and I hadn't realized he had picked up so much. Yeah. It's amazing what they absorb just from watching. And I am going to admit that I do give him a small allowance when he helps me because he helps me set up and he helps me bust everything into the kitchen when we're done. And he gives his time to me and he's seeing it like his first job. He's 10 now. Um, He's not, awesome about chores even though we try but this seems to be working so it is his way of helping me and you know sometimes it takes a little coaxing but then when he's involved I could see how proud he is of himself it make him feel good about himself oh that so you don't force your kids but you know keep keep the dialogue open and if your kids are passionate about cooking bring them in don't hold back um let them try the big knife with supervision. You know, let them learn to turn on the stove and do things independently. And don't be afraid of them making a mess because it can be cleaned up. Yes. Oh, I love it. I love all, everything you said. It's just wonderful. And um, really appreciate your taking the time to, um, to chat with us today. And um, I can't wait to share share it with the rest of our community. So thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. It's nice and to meet you in person. It, it was nice to meet you too. And let's stay in touch. I would love that. <laughs> Great. <laughs> All right. I'm